So looking at the uh, cardiovascular system, what we now need to consider is what are some of the conditions or diseases that can occur related to either the heart or the blood vessels uh, which can cause us problems and affect our health. The specification are specifically says that you need to be able to evaluate critically the impact of different types of physical activity on the cardiovascular system. So how does physical activity have an impact on the cardiovascular system? And that might be good, you know, that we, we assume that those are good effects. We also need to then consider these four factors or diseases associated with coronary heart disease, arteriosclerosis, atherosclerosis, angina, and heart attack, bearing in mind that we're always going to be promoting BALS, back to balanced, active, healthy lifestyles. So this term sed sedentary or sedentary, uh, this refers to a lifestyle which is inactive. Now, coronary heart disease is very much associated with our lifestyle, or what we eat and what we do. So this image clearly shows how we may have evolved, but actually we may have evolved into something which might not be quite as good for our health. And we've become quite sedentary, obese, um, and we don't particularly have good nutritional intake. And similarly, this image again implies that our lifestyle has become very automated, computerized, and we lose the healthy benefits associated with our cardiovascular system from being much more dynamic and active. So bowels. Um, many of these conditions or factors we should be familiar with by now, um, and they all will affect the cardiovascular system, not particularly in a good way if we have these things either wrong or in excess. Uh, however, physical activity is a central factor again that can affect our cardiovascular system, which we can very much have an effect on. So we can control a lot of these and we can definitely control the level of physical activity uh, that we do in our lifestyle, which ultimately will have an impact on whether we're at risk of coronary heart disease. So these would be the associated risk factors that we need to consider when we're looking at whether we're likely to suffer from coronary heart disease. Now, coronary heart disease specifically looks at the heart muscle and diseases associated with getting oxygen to the heart muscle. So we know the heart muscle's correct name is myocardium. So coronary heart disease would be associated with a lack of oxygen getting to the myocardium via the coronary heart vessels. Now it could be because those vessels have been blocked with fatty deposits and obviously if that blockage occurs less blood less oxygen can get through and get to the heart tissue itself. And we know that the heart tissue must have oxygen in order to continue working. Unfortunately, here's some uh, time related or year related data looking at the prevalence of coronary heart disease by age. So we've got different age categories. Now, the dotted lines are, are older age categories and you can see that the prevalence is a much higher percentage up here. However, um, we still have quite a high proportion, so between 10 and 15 percent of people who are aged 45 to 64 who might suffer from some form of cardiovascular disease or coronary heart disease. And frighteningly, there's still quite a, you know, a, a 2 or 3 percent of people who are relatively young who might suffer from coronary heart disease. Most significantly is that we're seeing in younger people early symptoms of coronary heart disease, which is really quite frightening. So there are actually four diseases that you need to know about, two related to blood vessels, the blood vessels, and two related more specifically to the heart, but all collectively to do with providing the myocardium with oxygen. The two um, blood vessel diseases are arterio and atherosclerosis, and the two heart-specific diseases are angina and heart attack. So let's take a look at arteriosclerosis. We can translate that word, it's quite a complex word, into two parts. Arteri means arteries and sclerosis means hardening of, so hardening of the arteries. And this basically means that the external lining, the external part of the coronary artery walls become hardened. How, and the impact of this is that during things like systole, when the arteries would normally stretch and recoil, 
we lose that ability to stretch if they're tough and, and, and not elasticated they can't stretch and recoil and the outcome of that is artery, arteries and arterioles which are supposed to stretch and recoil will lose that response lose that elasticity um, as a result blood pressure will be um, affected quite dramatically and elevated and we can't actually control so much where our blood goes so arterioles will be affected from this also they can't vasoconstrict or vasodilate as well so arteriosclerosis is, is the hardening of the artery walls which affects the ability of the arteries to expand and recoil as they should so we can translate atherosclerosis and um, atho means plaque and we already know that sclerosis means hardening of. So this is a condition where plaque inside the blood vessel walls, the artery walls, or sorry, in, inside the lumen, accumulates and hardens. And the impact of that is that um, the lining of the arteries becomes thicker and thicker and thicker. We, the laying down of this fibro fatty plaques um, or cholesterol or fatty acid or fatty tissues will actually ultimately reduce the size of the gap, reduce the size of the lumen with which the blood flows through. And if the blood can't flow through the lumen, then we have uh, less oxygen getting to the heart muscles. We have a greater chance of clots forming inside the blood vessels also. So atherosclerosis basically is the blocking up of the lumen of the arteries and particularly the coronary arteries. When these get blocked, we reduce the oxygen arriving at our um, heart muscle. So here's some images just to try to support that description. So this would be a, a normal artery. Uh, this artery is one which has arteriosclerosis. So you can see the thickness and the hardening of the vessel walls and ultimately the lumen, the gap inside, gets reduced also. But the, the walls are bit pr practically more rigid than they should be. They should be elasticated. And here on the right then, a blood vessel which has a, had a build-up of plaque, which has hardened, and again the lumen, the gap inside, has become restricted. This, this image on the right again shows a normal artery with a very clear lumen, and here's a, gr a little bit of build-up, so a little bit of atherosclerosis, and here a much more severe case where the, the lumen actually has been reduced very dramatically, and you can imagine not a great volume of blood getting through that vessel which basically here is on the outside of the heart wall and providing oxygen for the heart muscle the myocardium so then our heart diseases angina and heart attack so angina is basically a partial blockage of the coronary arteries so if you have atherosclerosis you have blockaging of the artery walls and the artery lumen then it could lead to angina and this involves feeling quite nasty pain particularly down your left side your left arm as a result of the myocardium not being able to work properly and it receiving less oxygen than it needs and this is pretty much a warning sign that we've got some coronary issues and you need to uh, seek medical attention from that then from that partial blockage we might have complete blockage of a coronary artery whereby no oxygen gets to the, car the cardiac tissue, the myocardium. And in that situation, you'd feel severe crushing pain in your chest um, and often nausea. And it's almost like a vice-like pain, vice-like squeezing on your chest. And it's possible that you might do some permanent damage to your heart muscle. Um, and obviously heart attacks can vary in severity, it might lead to death. So here's a video just to try and illustrate uh, a heart attack. The heart is responsible for pumping oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body, providing the energy that the body needs to function. The muscles of the heart itself also need a supply of blood. The coronary arteries, one of which we see here, fill that need. Sometimes a cholesterol plaque forms on the side of the artery, reducing blood flow. If part of that plaque breaks through into the artery, platelets tend to attach to it, creating a blood clot, further reducing or blocking blood flow. The blockage in the artery prevents blood from reaching part of the heart muscle. Without blood, the muscle is starved for oxygen, causing damage to the heart muscle. The heart attack occurs because the damaged heart can no longer pump properly.